Boop, boop, boop. Wolf, we got a film for YouTube. Hi, baby boy. Say hi to YouTube. Hello. He's annoyed because I just woke him up from a nap. Hello, YouTube. Tell him how to squat. <laughs> Behave. The audience is watching. You sit. <laughs> Go down. Go down. No? Come, come on this side, buddy. Okay, yeah. Here, come on this side. Good boy. Oh. Okay, I think we are set up and good to go. We got Scout out of the way, he's napping now. What's up, Prime Fam? We're gonna be discussing a lot in today's video, but before we get into that, I wanna start the video with some fun. So insert clip of my recent fucking badass 515 pound pause squat. That's right, baby. Tell me that pause wasn't super long, guys. So really clean uh, pause squat there, probably RPA. That's definitely an ability PR. I've never been able to pause in the 500s for that long and that comfortably and to have that much left in the tank. So really good sign. And that was also on metal plates. I wasn't on kilo plates, which makes the stability a little harder. Today, guys, we're gonna be discussing why I'm dramatically changing my training around. And we're actually gonna be talking about programming philosophy and some things that I think are broken in the mainstream. Uh, I'm also gonna walk you through that workout later. So if you don't care to hear about all the changes I'm making, fast forward to later in the video and you guys will have access to walking uh, me walking through my current workouts, uh, my squat workout that I just completed. Uh, we also are going to talk about mindset changes and I want to talk about self-belief, positivity, and consciousness. We're actually going to be referring to some science that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, especially in the field of, uh, you know, kinesiology, exercise science, etc. cetera. Um, and Scout is chewing his butthole, so we got that too. Um, so we're going to talk about a lot. Now, first off, I am currently training only three days per week, and that's going to be the theme moving forward for a while. The reason why is I realized well, I realized a couple of things. First off, I believe there's a strong bias towards higher frequency and volume modalities in the programming sphere of powerlifting because of the homogenous uh, population and from our overexposure to the glorification of Instagram highlight reels. So that's a really long drawn out fancy way of basically saying because the highest level lifters all tend to respond very similarly and favorably to their training modalities, we see what works really well for them, but we oftentimes don't get exposed to what might work more for other populations. Now, while I am a decently high level power lifter, I'm definitely not a world champion. I'm never gonna beat any of these like top tier guys uh, in their meets. Although maybe, maybe I will. We're gonna talk about mindset here in a second, but the reality is my body seems to respond way more to low volume and low frequency. And this has always been a theme of mine since day one in the gym. Um, since I can remember, all my best gains have always come from less volume. So I decided one, that I wanted to train a little less because I'm super into meditation right now and I spend nearly two to three hours every day meditating. And I also walk this little bugger uh, two, two times a day, usually an hour and a half per, uh, walk. And then I'm also checking in with clients all day on my phone. So my time's really limited. And so I want to only train three days a week. But on top of that, I realized before I really got super in the scene of powerlifting, my best gains came from less. I was squatting what I would consider barely twice a week because one day was like a front squat day and the other day was just a comp squat day. So I was like, you know, a lot of people don't even consider a front squat a main variation of the back squat. I do, but it is easier to recover from. So it's a very low frequency. And I was squatting maybe two to four, five working sets at most per week on squats. And that is what I'm currently doing. Uh, same thing on bench press. I had my best bench gains actually in quarantine in lockdown of 2020. I benched 425, paused. I think it was 425. It was either 419 or 425. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Funny how you can't remember your one RM. But I did that off two times a week benching and just a ton of accessories like floor press, dumbbell bench, etc. cetera. And um, every time I've benched three, four or more times a week, even if there's gains, it's really short lived. And then I always end up beat up. And this seems really obvious maybe when you say it out loud, but most people think it's insane these days for anyone to bench less than three or four times a week. You have guys like Johnny Candido and them talking about benching five, six days a week. 
I think I respond to the complete opposite of this. And I actually think a lot of those guys do too, but don't realize it, which is why you see some guys who stagnate on their bench press for years where they've barely added five kilos to their bench press, but they swear their five times a week frequency is working. I think they should try more a uh, low frequency, low volume approach and actually just spend a little bit more effort on accessory exercises. So that's basically what I'm doing. Um, the lift I'm doing the most volume on currently goes against the mainstream. It's actually the deadlift. I'm accumulating probably anywhere from four to six working sets on the deadlift currently, if you consider my main variations uh, sets as well. And then I'm also doing stiff-legged deadlifts off a deficit, which you'll see today. So I really, really do believe there's a heavy programming bias uh, in the powerlifting sphere. And so I'm changing that and we're gonna see what transpires over these next weeks. I feel stronger currently right now than I ever have on everything but the bench press because of an injury. And I am actually weighing 212 to 213 pounds. Again, I keep losing weight. Um, I'm just letting it happen at this point. I don't like being heavier if I'm honest. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. But even with that and only training three days a week the last month, my gains have actually only gotten better and my body's feeling healthier. So I think I'm onto something. I'll hold myself accountable. We'll see what happens here over the course of the next months. Now, next thing I want to talk about is my mindset changes um, with training. So... There is a doctor, um, I'm not gonna say his first name because I always butcher it, it's Japanese, but his uh, last name is Emoto. Uh, so Dr. Emoto studied water, specifically water consciousness. And what he found is when you literally speak or think positive thoughts or even play certain kinds of music to water, they express these shapes at the microscopic level that are these beautiful geometric shapes when you expose it to positive thought, music, vibration, intention. So literally, if you stare at water and pray towards it, or you think really positive thoughts towards it, it expresses these really beautiful shapes. I'll try to put photos on the screen of that. Likewise, when you think really negative thoughts towards it, or play really disruptive music towards it, like heavy metal, for one, um, not, not that I'm hating on heavy metal. I listen to that sometimes too. It does the total opposite. It makes the water express these really disgusting looking shapes and it creates this disharmony in the water. And we know that actually positive intention, belief, uh, hugely manifests genetic expression and genetic changes uh, at a physiological level. We've seen this with the studies with the runners where they basically lied to these runners and told one group who actually had positive gene mutations for running and the other group who didn't, they, they told them the opposite of what was true and their belief affected them more than their own genes did. We've seen this hands down a million times around and it, it seems clear that not only is your conscious effort and belief and the positivity you use hugely expressing different outcomes in everything from pain reception to physical performance, but it also can hinder you and limit you when you do the opposite. And I've realized that I've always used a very negative mindset towards training. And when I've tried to use a positive mindset, it's kind of never set in the right way. And so how I'm approaching my lifts now is like positive adrenaline is how I'll put it. You'll see on my squats, and on uh, all my accessory exercises, there's a, a more of a flow to it. I'm a little bit looser than I usually am, a little less tense, but I'm still high adrenaline and positive, and I'm trying to cultivate that as well as my belief into my body. I don't wanna believe that I have to be 220 pounds and slightly chubbier to maximize my strength. I know a lot of people think, well, that's just physics. The heavier you are, the more you can lift. I don't think that's true. I think a lot of where we go wrong is actually in our mental belief systems, as well as how that affects the body with stress and whatnot. And so I wanna to try to challenge myself to actually just weigh whatever my body wants to weigh, which currently it wants to weigh something a little bit lighter. And I really think this is going to garner the best results as long as I pair my mindset and smart training with it. And so we're, we're working with both the modality of you know smart, intentional training as well as the mindset. So we're, we're trying to pair both of these universes together. Um, so let's talk about my actual workout today now that we're eight minutes into this video uh, or actually probably nine minutes with the little intro of scouts. Um, so first off, I start off with pause squats. So why am I doing these? Well, first off, I'm working on position and confidence. So a lot of the time people are like, oh, what are you doing pause squats for? Is it for working on you know weakness in the hole? Or are you doing front squats to work on your quads or like whatever it is? And that's such a, a like very um, biomechanical way or lens of viewing this. 
and which is fine. There's merit to that. But I also think people forget about the mental benefits of certain exercises and what it orchestrates from um, kind of a sensory feedback of your body. And so the reason I'm mainly doing pause squats is to feel ultra confident. I, I love pause squats, especially really long, heavy pause squats for feeling really confident in my stability and, and form, really strong in my expression of strength. There's nothing quite like building up a ton of tension in a pause squat and just absolutely obliterating some heavy load with picture perfect form. You can see here, I'm really just in the perfect position that suits my squatting strength. And that brings me to the next point. I'm actually trying to build these pause squats up to reinforce my extension dominance. I'm, I'm kind of tired of holding back what I really believe in um, on YouTube because I don't want to hear other people disagreeing. I don't want to get in debates with anyone online. But the truth is I'm, I'm arching my back when I squat. And, and I've had a hard time. I always say something like, oh yeah, I'm kind of biasing extension. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm making sure my abs are engaged, but I'm, I'm playing into my extension dominance. No, no, no. When I'm squatting, I'm arching my back. And, and that's just the reality. But I've always been stronger like that. And everyone tells me not to do that. And every time I don't do that, it hurts. And, and then it doesn't feel good. I feel strong literally arching my back. Now, I'm not doing a fucking bench press arch, okay? Like that's just not gonna feel good for anyone but I am quite literally extending my back. I am not very contracted in my abs. I am squeezing my abs as hard as I can, but I am biasing extension. And these pause squats are helping reinforce that. And guess what? This was the healthiest squat set I've done in months. Like everything else felt gross. This, these felt good even after accumulating a lot of fatigue from all those big squat PRs you guys saw me doing. So after the pause squats, I went on to some deep high bar close stance pause squats to work mobility and end range position and explosiveness. Now, the, the whole point here, and the reason I have my computer up is to remind me of everything I wanna talk about. I wanted to do these high bar pause squats really narrow, really focus on mobility, but also have a load on there that's a bit heavier than I normally would have on my high bar work. So a lot of the time, my high bar work on say my secondary days, I'm getting into the mid to high 300s, maybe towards the end of the cycle, I'm getting in the you know 400 range but it, it's usually a lot of adrenaline and it's very taxing on my body. These 405 pound pause, super deep high bar squats were completely effortless. They felt like RP two or three. Uh, and they probably were really low RPE. And the reality of the situation is, is now I have a good load on the bar, but that's not crazy challenging and I can promote that explosiveness, that confidence in the end range position. So I'm trying to balance here with the repetition range I'm using and the form I'm using with the depth and position, I'm trying to balance having a heavy load on the bar, but not doing extremely high exertion, high taxing, high volume lifts. So there will be a time where I get back to my tens and eights on, on high bar. There's a time where you wanna build that volume and work capacity, but I've been doing that for so many training cycles in a row. Right now I'm really focused on really low reps. In fact, I'm not exceeding anything above five reps on any of my squat days currently. Everything's low rep. And that's just because I, f I can tell that's what my body needs from an adaptation standpoint. All the sets of eight and 10 will come back at some point. You guys know I love my volume on squats, but I've really ran that into the ground the past few training cycles. And now my squat is catching so much more momentum from working more explosiveness, low volume, higher intensity, and lower exertion work, which it's, it's weird when you say high intensity, low exertion. A lot of people think the heavier the load on the bar, the higher the exertion, but that's not the case. You can have high intensity, but keep the exertion very low if you program it the right way within the rep ranges. Um, now, after that, I did deficit stiff-legged deads. I'm, I'm doing a reverse mix grip. So I'm actually keeping my left hand supinated instead of my right hand, which is normally what I do. And I'm doing this to try to see if I can fix up some imbalances. Um, it probably won't do too, too much because it's a little bit lighter. But, you know, from years and years of doing mix grip the other way, I do feel like I have some imbalances built up. I don't think they're hugely detrimental, but it is something I want to, I guess, you know, just kind of be mindful of. Uh, with that, I, I just did a four inch deficit, beltless, really working range of motion, mobility here. The, this is my secondary deadlift day. So you'll notice I'm no longer pairing heavy squats and deads together. I basically have one heavy squat day, one heavy bench day, one heavy deadlift day. And then I do some kind of um, alternate lift after those. So after my heavy squat, I'm doing an alternate deadlift. After my heavy deadlift, I'm doing an alternate squat. So you guys will see the heavy deadlifts on the other day. Um, and this has been feeling really, really good to just have one main thing I focus on. Again, besides looking at everything through the lens of physiological adaptation, what, what can we look at as far as um, your mental stimulation? I do think a program has to take into account your mental stimulation and stress. 
So if you're doing things that are really redundant and you've been doing the same program for a long time, I don't care what anyone says. If you go into the gym and you're like, fuck, I'm on this program that doesn't even make that much sense, but I'm hyped the fuck up to do it. I guarantee you you're going to have positive outcome from it, even if it's a bad program on paper because you're so fucking excited to do it. That ties back into that positivity and also the belief in your program to, to not be in that same mundane routine shit from time to, to over and over again. And honestly, you see this in a lot of lifters. You see guys, okay, maybe they're, they're PRing big and winning some big competition or hitting these numbers, but you take a look at some of their lifts that are suffering and, and they're doing the same shit over and over again for, for years on end, and it's always their weakest lift. I think this is a big part of the reason why. Um, lastly, finish up with some hip flexor work. Again, trying to stay mobile here. Some single leg, um, just knee raises basically. Uh, these actually feel amazing. Guys, try these out. Um, your hip flexors are something you really want to train. I haven't seen too many people do this variation. I actually got this from someone at the gym that was doing it. I was like, that's a really cool way of doing it. So he was doing a bunch of hip flexor work and I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna try that out. I kind of modified it to fit my needs a little bit better, but really extending that glute fully at the back and then flexing all the way up. Feels amazing, go really light on these. I also like them high rep. I was doing sets of 12 here, I think, but I, I've done these as, as high as 20 reps. I really, really love these for just mobility more than anything and, and, and feeling healthy, moving well. You don't wanna be one dimensional. You're just gonna get led to injuries. Again, that programming bias, that homogenous population when you're fucking five foot five or five seven, like all the power lifters out there, yeah, squats and deads probably aren't gonna beat you up quite as much, but if you know, you're a normal sized male, not to roast them, you know, being six foot and lanky, God, squats and deads roast me. And even if you are that manlet size person, again, no hate, I'm just having some fun. I'm just, just poking buttons here, guys. I'm just trying to keep it lighthearted. You, you don't wanna be so one dimensional that you run yourself into the ground. I think there's a reason powerlifters are always beat up. I was never like that before I got super involved in the realm of powerlifting. I was always healthy, even though I was squatting really heavy weights and my body weight even back then. And I did a lot more movement variability. I think the trick though is not biasing it too much. I'm not gonna lie, about six months ago when I was doing all the prime program stuff, I think I was going a little too crazy on all the accessories and that was affecting my strength on the main lift. So it's balance, it's balance. Lastly, GHR sit-ups to finish up the day and that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this little guy here. I'm gonna annoy him and hold him up. That's okay, he annoys me all day. Come here, say, say goodbye to the people scouts. We're gonna be moving across country soon. We're gonna go on a road trip and drive this little guy. I cannot fly, I'm gonna have to drive for days on end to make sure this guy doesn't get put into a cargo container. I love you. We'll catch you guys in the next video.